love this vampire with bed hair look. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Hello and welcome. My name is Miranda um, and today I'm going to be doing yet another unoriginal video idea. Yay! Um, unoriginal as in like I didn't make it up um, because I can't think of ideas. I just steal other people's. <laughs> so today I'm going to be um, shamelessly stealing an idea from, <laughs> I feel so bad, like <laughs> shamelessly is wrong, I am ashamed, um, but um, I'm going to be um, doing a video inspired by another video that someone else did where I recommend you books based on a random word generator. This is inspired by um, Low Shelf Esteem, um, I don't actually know their name, um, but they have a great YouTube channel, so there's that. Um, and yeah, um, basically I watched this video and I was like, this is really fun, I really enjoyed this, I'm gonna make this. So that's what I'm doing. But also, as you may know, I'm really bad at remembering books I've read, so it's quite possible that I will just get a word and I won't be able to think of a book, but I'm gonna try real hard <laughs> without any further dilly-dallyment or shaking hair out of my eyes. Let's generate a word. Got my laptop. You can see how bad the lighting is because of how much this is illuminating me. Generate random words. Invisible, that's a good one to start with. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna recommend to you Minor Detail by Adania Shibley, um, translated by Elizabeth Jaquette, I think. Yes. So this follows an Israeli soldier um, as he is kind of patrolling um, some land in Palestine um, in I really should know the date of this. Um, I think it's 1948. Is it 1948? Where's the date? 1949. Um, yeah, he's he's doing some patrols in 1949, um, and he finds um, a Palestinian woman, um, brings her back to the camp, and she is raped and shot. Um, and that's the first half of the book. Um, and the second half follows a woman. Um, in modern day Palestine who um, sort of finds out about this event um, and then is sort of becomes obsessed with it and wants to um, find out more about this woman and what she felt like and kind of what her experiences were. Um, and the reason I've chosen it for this word is because the woman in this book is invisible so she is um, never given any kind of voice. All of the meaning um, in the first half is given to um, the soldier and his, um, basically him cleaning himself and his daily routine. And this is a really, really amazing examination of war and um, humanity and what, what war does to people um, and how war can kind of make people invisible and also how events can become um, invisible if no one kind of gives um, significance to them um, or um, if they are deliberately erased. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's a good one to start with and this is an amazing book um, and I think you should read it. Okay, next word. Laptop. Generate. Vision. Ooh, interesting. So this I'm gonna go for Little Eyes by Samantha Schweblin um, translated by Megan McDowell um, because, as you may guess from the title, it's all about watching people um, and essentially this is about um, a kind of invention um, called the Kuntukis um, and they are little creatures um, that live in people's houses and the little creatures have cameras in them and people can live in the creature essentially and control it remotely. Um, you can get, you can like buy a connection which um, gives you control over a random Kentucky um, anywhere in the world um, and essentially the book is all about different people's experiences of these little creatures um, and it gets quite dark but it's also a lot about um, connection and um, loneliness and people kind of coming together um, and finding um, yeah finding like comfort in other people even if they're not really like physically there um, or even if they can't properly communicate. 
and I think this one is really really interesting um it's not like my favorite book that I've ever read but I thought it was a solid read um and I found some of the scenarios that Samantha Shrubling like comes up with really unexpected and creepy and will remain with me like for ages they're the kind of things that like you would never imagine um and you can't quite pinpoint what it is about them that is so horrifying but there's something really like twisted about them um and yeah i just thought it was great okay next word generate content is that what i'm producing now am i producing content am i a content creator no i just realized the word could also be content so you know what i'm going to go with instead um is um ask again yes by mary Beth Keane, which i have right behind me because i finished it yesterday and it was great i really enjoyed it so this is about two families um the gleasons and the stanhopes um and essentially they live together um well they don't live together they live next to each other um in a suburb of new york um and one day something really terrible happens um and they are kind of divided bad thing happens it affects the rest of their lives and it follows each of the members of this family this family these families um like in the kind of fallout of this event predominantly focusing on two of um the children from the families um who are like best friends um as kids and then obviously they're sort of like um split down the middle um when this event happens that divides these families and i'm going to recommend this because well for this word because it is i mean it is a lot about like unhappiness there's a lot of like really hard stuff that happens in this book especially about mental health um and like families and how things can be passed down but ultimately it is sort of about how like well, I mean, there's there's a phrase in it that um, is kind of, I think it, it's something like, you know, love is enough and like just being around people that you care about sometimes is enough. The characters re reach a level of contentment and kind of like, even with, that, with all the stuff they've been through, they get to the end and they're like, you know, we are okay. Um, and that I don't know it made me really emotional and I loved the ending of this and I loved the whole thing um just the kind of journey that you go on with these characters is lovely um beep beep beep, beep. also the title does make sense um <laughs> for what happens in the book there's a little one episode that relates to this title um so it's not just like a really weird phrase next word I'm not sure how many I've done I think it's three but maybe we'll go to whenever I get tired. How about that? Next word. Boop. Raw. Mmm, interesting. Okay, so for this I'm going to recommend The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter um, because I think there is one story in here about a tiger or creatures that roar. I don't know, but there are definitely stories in there about, like, beasts and creatures and things that might go um <laughs> so i'm going with it this is a kind of classic now um collection of short stories which are all retellings of fairy tales and kind of reimaginings um and there are a couple of retellings of the same fairy tale which is quite cool so there are like there are several reimaginings of um red riding hood for example and most of them are like creepy and dark and twisted especially the first one but they're not all like that um, some of them are just really beautiful and um, my actual, my favourite is called um, I think The Earl King um, and it is just some of the most beautiful writing I've ever read in my entire life um, and yeah they're all so atmospheric, so kind of subversive and fun and creepy and I love it so much. Next word, next word, next word. I'm holding my laptop up so you can actually see that I am doing a word. Comment. I think for this I'm going to recommend um actually two books because they kind of go together in my head 
um, Reasons to Stay Alive and Notes on the Nervous Planet by Matt Haig. Um, the reason I'm going to recommend these two is because they are both sort of almost made up of comments. Um, so Reasons to Stay Alive is about um, Matt Haig's experience um, with depression um, and anxiety as well, I think, and, and kind of how he sort of learned to appreciate life again. Um, and it was a really, really important read for me um, a few years ago. Um, so it's like it holds a really special place in my heart. Notes on the Nervous Planet is kind of structured in the same way. Um, it's about um, sort of generally the anxiety of like living in modern life, I guess, um, and how everything is moving very fast and there's just so much to think about all the time and how that can be really overwhelming um, and how often we just need to like slow down and stop and take a moment for ourselves. Um, but the way they're told is in like m sort of mini chapters, sometimes only a couple of pages, which are like um, little snippets of thoughts um, that he has about these topics. So often they'll just feel like, you know, comments in the sense that they are short and brief. That's all I could, that's the best I can do, I'm sorry. <laughs> next word, next word, next word. Next word, next word. Why am I? Orientation. Orientation. Okay. Bear with. Ooh, okay. Um, for this, I'm going to recommend Exit West by Mosin Hamid. Um, this might be a bit of a stretch, but I'm going with it anyway. Basically, I'm going to recommend it because it's a good book. Um, but I'm in a weird mood today. I don't know if you can tell. Um, it's about, um, essentially doors opening in um places in the world and they open in other places in the world and you can go through the doors and find yourself in a new place and it's kind of similar to little eyes in the sense that it takes this sort of like kind of sci-fi ish concept like speculative um and just kind of runs with it and sees what happens without thinking about um a plot necessarily it's just kind of more about the idea and it looks at different places in the world and how people kind of will like queue up to certain doors um and people discovering new ones um and yeah i guess it's about orientation because it's about finding where you are and places and going places um i read this one a while ago so i don't remember it that well but i did really enjoy it and it's very short doop dee doop it's a word burial that's a good one. I know exactly what I'm going to go for, which is The Death of Vivek OG, um, which is, oh, beautiful, heartbreaking. Um, oh, and it's by Akwaki Mezi. So this starts off with um, Vivek OG being dead, obviously, um, and their body is left on the doorstep of the parents' house, um, wrapped in cloth. Um, and basically, it's about the kind of repercussions and grief of um the like Vivek's family and Vivek's friends um and, but also kind of goes back and looks at their life um and there's just a lot about like discovering who they were um and how they kind of basically got to the point where they died and it is one of the most heartbreaking books I've ever read. Burial is quite significant um in the book um and there's also a lot about like, um, I guess, like liminality, is that the word? Um, kind of the in-between um, and crossovers between like life and death um, and between genders and between different kinds of love. Um, and yeah, it's about lots of things. It's utterly beautiful. One of my favourite books that I read last year. It's brilliant. Please read it. Next word, next word. Trade. Trade. Again, this one is a bit of a stretch, but I don't care. Um, I'm going to recommend The Binding by Bridget Collins because in this book, um, the main character slash narrator, maybe I can't remember, um, goes to be an apprentice to a bookbinder, um, meaning his trade is bookbinding. Um, and bookbinding is special because in this kind of like alternative sort of historical kind of fantasy place 
Um, it's not really like explained where it is, it's just sort of like an alternative universe almost. Um, books are used to um, like bind people's memories. Um, so if you like, you can give your memory to a book and then you will not have that memory anymore. Um, and yeah, the book's all about that. And I think you don't really need to know much more than that. Um, apart from that, it's wonderful and I loved it very much. Um, and it definitely is associated with trade because there's apprenticeships and trade. It makes sense. Right, I'm gonna do one more word. Let's hope that it's a good one. Rent. How we gonna pay? How we gonna pay? How we gonna pay? Last year's rent. That was beautiful, in case you're wondering. Two hours later. This is annoying, because I can think of exactly the right sort of book for this. Um, like, if I... If I had finished it, I would recommend Lustre, because from what I read that like you know a lot of that was about having a shitty landlord um, but I I genuinely can't think of anything so I'm gonna generate another word see if it's any better arena okay this is really random um <laughs> but for this I am going to recommend the Roman Mysteries series by Caroline Lawrence um which is a series that I read when I was um a wean um and it was fantastic basically there's a load of books um about a group of friends living in ancient rome um and they solve crimes and it's wonderful um but there is one specific book um i can't remember which one it is there's like 20 in the series um where they go to rome and see the games and the there's gladiators and stuff and it's all in like the arena see um and i distinctly remember that one being really good um and i really like vividly remember all like the imagery of the gladiators and the animals and all this stuff um and yeah they're just fantastic books um like really great historical mysteries um and i would highly recommend them so that was that um thank you very much for watching and thank you very much to low shelf esteem for this video idea and for making great videos um you're great great i will be back next week um with my september wrap up so far i have read two books so that's great um who knows if i will finish more um hopefully i will but I guess you'll have to wait and see subscribe if you want to see if i read more than two books in september anyway this has been fun it's dark and i'm tired so farewell